let's you and I spin off possibilities for the meaning of the title. At least say, Carlos, what it's what occurs to you when you see a poem called Connected. Um, well, a few things can start to come to mind. I mean, just if I'm ignoring the rest of the poem and I'm just thinking about the title, like you say, I think, yeah. all right, am I going to be connected to... Is this the speaker connected to another person? Is this the speaker connected to um, sort of like humanity as a whole? Um, is this the speaker connected to um, an environment that they are in? Are they connected to me as the reader? Is it a meta poem in that way? First, when we say the word connected, I don't think about the speaker at all. I think that I think of the meaning of connected uh, uh, as a social intimacy, connected, I'm connected to her, I'm connected to him, we're connected. And then there's the internet idea of connected. I'm connected. I'm really connected. Which sounds more impersonal than the social intimacy connection. Such as, he's really wired, he's wired. Jason, you want to throw in one sense of connected that will lead us, since you know you, you're the spoiler alert guy since you wrote the poem? Um, I, I would say this is... In, in a way, I think that it's a meta poem. It's a mod poem, meta poem, because I think that. What? I think that this comes out of you pointing to the mug. No. And saying this. Wait a minute. This poem was written during Probably your first, participation in mod poem. If if not the first draft, at least what the poem turned into is distinctly and I consciously remember is thinking about the pointing to the mug. All right. This is really cool. <laughs> so Modpo is now including a poem by mm -hmm. a Modpo poet mm -hmm. that is partly about the Modpo idea. So right. can we hold off yes. saying what that is mm -hmm. until a little later in the conversation? Yes. Okay, good. All right, so we have connected. What I want to do next, Carlos, is look at the first stanza. And I want to ask you a particular question about the wording, about the grammar and the logic. Okay? All right. A long sugar stick, dash, translucence and transparency. So presumably those two words modify or describe that sugar stick. And more, another dash and more description twirled, in other words, the stick is twirled, twirled becomes there, therefore an adjective, but it could also be a verb, it could be an active verb if the molecular ribbon is being twirled. But we can also see it as a describer, a long sugar stick twirled molecular ribbon dash, and now the word I want to ask you about, held, as in the phrase, held dark inside. It too, Carlos, can be a verb. The stick held something, mm -hmm. held something inside. It could also be a further description of what's going on. If it's the verb, tell us what is being held dark inside this mouth against this tongue. To me, um, reads as a couple of different things. One could be like the the sentence almost is that am i oh you're going here? fancy okay that's fine the reason you think it might be the sentence itself mm -hmm. you have to say itself a lot in this conversation about jason's poetry the sentence itself is that we're in a poem and here we have a mouth and a tongue right. and it may be something that's not being said but is held inside unsaid mm -hmm. maybe mouth I'm doing a weird mouthing. Maybe mouth, which is the mouth version of the brain thinking about what the next lines could be. Jason, can you teach to. this guy to be literal? <laughs> um, or maybe there is no literal way of reading this. I don't know. When I was a kid, there would be these Did jars you know? of, Actual of sticks. <laughs> and they were, you look at them, and they have layers, and it looks mm -hmm. like they've been spun and mm. so it creates like a double helix. That would be what I would call the first reading. Gotcha. You gotcha. keep doing the second reading. <laughs> the second reading is, here is a poet starting a poem called Connected. And the first thing we have is the image or the idea of things being held inside and not said. Not a, a tongue that's sucking darkly but not 
producing word sounds. This mouth, this tongue, scissor this word, command verb again, scissor this word from printed fiber, okay, scissor. Let this persuasive stain, standing in this sunlit creek, burn this on a pyre, delete this, remember how Jason read it, this is a different this, delete this with a clap from air, scratch this from the sand, this through line. There's a lot of this is in a poem this short. I know this is a common word, but it ain't this common. This is a poem, haha, in which the poet is using the word this a lot. Next to command verbs. Let this, scissor this, burn this, delete this. Okay, Carlos, he's already, Jason has already kind of spoiled the ultimate <laughs> conversation. Spoiled, I mean in a movie, someone tells you about a movie or a TV show, um, by telling us that it has a Mod Po reference to this. When I do that, what am I saying? You know, in, in Mod Po, what am I meaning? There. This is the, the, the denotative act, the indexical pointing uh, that a word does to mug, the mm -hmm. word mug. And basically, I have to use my mouth for this, but <laughs> when, 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 when denotation succeeds, right. mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. word mug adheres to the thing, mm -hmm. and there is a relationship that's a successful communicative relationship. Right. Uh -huh. But the problem is, when there's no more mug, putting this down on the floor, I'm sure I'm mm -hmm. going to kick it over. <laughs> when there's no more mug and I refer to this, or this, mm -hmm. or this, now the whole world opens up. Mm -hmm. So what were you thinking about in the Modpo sense when you started to find that your poem was about that Modpo gesture, the indexical word-thing relationship? Well, I think that I became... Frightened by the word this, frightened by the indexical power of of that word. A to poet frightened by the indexical power of a word. Yeah. Tell us why, really. I'm worried about its its uh, its power to claim in a way. It's power, the power it invests the speaker with, in which the speaker claims an object in the world, is maybe the most... Is, is that related, that power, is that related, we know it's related to the, forgive the metaphor, but the um, imperialism or colonialism of people naming things and therefore mm -hmm. having them and owning them. Here, maybe, that ha that's what appears with the scrap macaques, the experimental lab animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's that kind of fear, like, what are we doing with our determinative naming? And what are we Sorry, doing ethics? with our um, determinative cl claiming? Because I think that, I guess in thinking over and over again about the word this, I was increasingly struck by thinking about it in relationship to, to space and time, and that it always requires a positioned speaker who is in spatial relation to the thing marked this. There, you can't be um, in an abstract position and say this. Are you reacting? When you wrote this poem and began to think about the Mod Po this, mm -hmm. which is really in the beginning the Dickinsonian this, mm -hmm. uh, then becomes the Laureen Niedekerian this and the right. Sid Cormanian this and all that. What we do there is we're celebrating um, for occupation this, which is an airy, thin, doesn't physically exist state of having uh, something stuck in your mouth. Mm -hmm not coming out, and when it comes out, it's merely this. I assume you're having a positive response to that kind of this, mm -hmm. and a negative response to a world of this where there's this supposed success. 
Right. Well, and as an act of my, in a way, how can, maybe the, like in the question that I'm asking that I don't have the answer to is how did two people share a this? How if, do they share a this? If this is a, if this is a, an ind, necessarily a positioned individual speaker's act of positioning vis-a-vis -vis the object. Oh my word! This is a meta meta poem. This is a poem called "Connected," which is about whether this connects us, <laughs> and how could we have a this for occupation? This how can we have? occupations that are the same yeah um whoa connected is ironic if i say the mug is this this mug i i'm not the mug the mug separates me the word this separates me from what i designate as this yes and so so the experiment in the poem is to imagine because this is, I've always thought, I've always thought of as one of my favorite words, as a word that it does, is such a slip of a word that does such a powerful um, embrace, em, embracing act, mm. and that, what, what if we see the word this as suddenly uh, turn it upside down or backwards and, and imagine a world without this. The poem becomes meta-poetic meta only when we realize that the word that you want to scissor out or delete is not a word of a poem, which would be meta-poetic, but this. Mm -hmm. So scissor this word this is ironic because the word that you want to scissor is this. Mm -hmm. When we get down to the second to last stanza, which we should look at now, right. you, you're much more explicit. Mm -hmm. Delete this with a clap from air. A clap from air I take as a kind of deus ex machina, like a, a magic, the, the mm -hmm. magic. Right? Delete this with a clap from air, from the file of words, as if there's like a zuska... Uh, li RAM, ra ready access memory of a whole bunch of words, right? From all the words that scratch this from the sand with the pointed stick, I get this image of ephemeral writing, of, mm -hmm. of being, you know, drawing at the beach and having the waves, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Delete this with a clap from air, from of the file of words. Scratch this from the sand with pointed stick. Well, sort of like you were saying, if we delete this it's an interesting concept saying that well if we delete this word this we delete our ability to separate ourselves from whatever it is we're pointing at um such that you know then we actually are connected in a way because we think and maybe then the title is sort of ironic but also sincere and that you know i think that by saying this and acknowledging this and many poems that talk about this or whatever object they're saying there's the sense that, oh, I'm really connecting with this object that I'm pointing to or this person or just my ability to perceive it, and that's a connection. But what you're saying then is, well, no, that actually separates you from the object, that I can't talk about this because to say this separates it from me, and mm -hmm. now I'm an observer and it's an object being observed, mm -hmm. um, which is interesting, though, because it's a poem about that. So you're pointing at us, pointing at this, which is... <laughs> meta, meta, meta. Which is Actually, I think the last stanza unironizes un yeah. the, the, the title. I think so. And mm -hmm. I think this is where Jason's... And I, I'm taking advantage of the fact that I know the poet. Mm -hmm. I think that Jason's extraordinary humaneness mm -hmm. comes through as he seeks in the abyss of this having been cut out. Mm -hmm some kind of connection otherwise. Mm -hmm. I don't think that this through line 
Although through line could be an ironic word because it's not the kind of word that you would normally use unironically. Maybe we should pause on that ter on that term. What's a through line? Maybe I'm using it wrong. It's kind of map word. Yeah, a map. Yeah. Uh, through line is a um, a consistent thought that takes you through something difficult. It's sometimes in political speech. Mm -hmm. The through line is the bullshit that connects <laughs> all the abstraction mm -hmm. that the politician has just uttered. Right. Um, uh, in 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 uh, corporate speak, a through line is um, is how we emerge at the end with a consistent message or. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I, li I liked it because the word itself is an oxymoron to me because a line draws a border between two things. So for a line to be something that takes one through is except a if the line is the line of a poem mm -hmm. which moves left to right and does connect. Exactly. In fact, in the enjambment of this through line will connect you. Mm -hmm. The non-enjamming happens right after you. Mm -hmm. So there is a connect a through line that connects. Mm -hmm. This is really like triply referring, I think. Mm -hmm. Which is hilarious considering that the poem is about the problems of referring. <laughs> this through line will connect you to me. Let's stop there. So, Carlos, your in initial metapoetic reading works here. Say the obvious, please. Uh, writer to the reader. In the Sid Corman sense. Right. Now we're going to go on. So this through line will connect you to me. So after all this agony, I still think that you could connect to me in this ghostly, I wrote a poem and it's published in a book and you don't know me kind of way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we go on, and here's where the hard part again happens. It may be just Jason being a comic poet and not wanting to settle on something so sincere and sentimental. Uh, the through line will connect you to me, whether you be of tar, of electric, of pheromone, spat through tube. Carlos, before we turn to Jason, who can help us with this list, there's three items. Sure. You could, the person who's being connected to could be of tar, right. could be of electric, or could be of pheromones spat through tube. Do any one of those three. Tar and electric, I'm thinking objects. Tar, maybe a street. Electric, you know, my toaster, whatever, that I'm pointing at. So you're connecting to these objects. But wait a minute. But wait then. A minute, wait a minute. Wait oh, a minute. Whoa, whoa. wait. Okay, Whether there's a you be, the you, <laughs> no, I, I don't yeah, yeah. need to suggest that. Mm. You, the you w will connect you to me. The right. you is the reader, we said. Okay. Or the person grappling with this idea. Okay. Whether you be of tar. In other words, the, per the reader is of tar. What does it mean to, for a person to be of tar? You have I'm no not idea, sure. Right? Maybe a worker or something like that. I'm not, okay, that's nice and know. literal. I like that. I can, all I can think of is... Tar pits. I think of like somebody who's expired or extinct. Mm -hmm. um, it could also be someone who smokes a lot. Jason, what do you you have any thoughts on that? Tar. Um, Can a person be of tar? Um, yeah, but I I think in a way I probably had carbon there. Yeah, and good. That's sort out. of like my tar pits thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Somebody so, long gone. So. And I'm, or that's it. So of is kind of there's a implied made, made of tar, right? Yeah. And we are indeed carbon. And are we made of electric as well, Carlos? Uh, sure. You're a scientist, aren't you? Not really. <laughs> Maybe. Um, like your uh, nerves, nervous system. The nervous system is basic, and pheromone. Um, this. Did you study this in high school biology? Um, I mean, yeah, fair, but it's the spat through tube yeah, line. Yeah, let's stick with pheromone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, people have, well, pheromones, things that are, uh, make you attracted to another person. Yeah. Uh, S smell or sometimes it's an saliva. Enzyme, yeah. Right? It's a right, and well, it's something uh, that is is just a disembodied... It's a hormone that is released from a the body. Hormone. So whether you are... It's, it's a very sincere statement, in my opinion. Whether you are of carbon, made of carbon, or whether you're made of the nervous system, or whether you're made of 
hormones, whatever it is, this through line will connect you to me.